Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. The Braves beat the Dodgers again. It was a walk-off. And what's going to happen in Game 3, Red Sox, Astros? Let's do it! Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. Brought to you by DraftKings. My name's Jimmy. We got Trevor in California. We got Jake in the Bronx and VBD producing behind the plate. Another good game of championship Hmm. series baseball last night. Braves win again. Dodgers, what's going on? Good stuff. Jake and I were watching live on the stream. Trev called in. Trev went to a horror night. Oh my God. BBD behind the dish. How you doing, Trev? Guys, I'm doing great. I'm excited to talk about this game. Uh, I did go to a like a fright fest type thing last night. Not my cup of tea. Uh, but again, out in LA, it was fun to see in a group of you know people not watching baseball. Everyone was watching baseball on their phone. It was really cool to see that. Um, I don't know, man. This this game kind of kind of had it all. I'm excited to talk about this. Excited to talk about the ALCS. I got some hot takes that I think Ron Darling will like to hear, mm-hmm. which is great. Uh, Jacob, how are you doing, man? Interesting. James, Trevor, BBD, everyone live in the chat. Uh, the moms, your friends, your family, mm. mostly Eddie Rosario, my guy. Um, yes. What a night, man, Atlanta. Things are getting very real. Um, my biggest concern for Braves fans, they're kind of welcoming me in with open arms. I'm drinking the Kool-Aid between Jock and the Pearls and our guy Young Thick, Ozzy Albee, sexy as hell. Um, mm. the Braves are a lot of fun right now, and I—I I mean, there's a lot of conversations to be had about this game, about the rest of the series, because I mean, the Dodgers still have for four games. They're gonna have four of the nastiest starting pitchers you're gonna see if they get it there. And meanwhile, the Braves and the Salt Man, like this, is getting very real for Atlanta. I'm excited for them. We've got a lot of Atlanta people. In the company, Pete Moylan, Kelsey Winger, Ashlyn, Trevor Plouffe was wearing the hat right now. He's claiming himself part of Braves territory. So, uh, baseball's hot, man, especially that cat scratch, my guy. Me and Eddie used to play in the Twins together. People forget that. People forget. James, how are you doing? Mm. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, you know, some traffic last night, but that was a fun game. Uh, the NL Series has been... And I, the AL series, obviously, there's a lot of bias when I say it because it's just like, ugh. But uh, I like the closer, lower scoring drama ending games more. Yes. Uh, so they've been fun. Ron Washington getting tons of love. That's awesome. I don't know if you saw the fun tidbit about Rosario, but he went back into the clubhouse to grab the bat he hit the cycle with. For his last at bat of the game, because that's his magic bat. I didn't hear that one, which is pretty awesome. Awesome, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna dig down. Is it a deeper? Is, I mean, is it a uh, a different model? Like, I gotta dig. I gotta dig. I mean, and find man, out. we've got Eddie with a magic bat. Jock Peterson is wearing pearls on a baseball field and hitting 454 foot homers off of Max Scherzer. Uh, there's some magic in the mm. ATL right now, man. Mm. You want to you want to hear some magic? Yes. I told you I was gonna save this for the show. People, someone said I was low energy in the chat. <laughs> they don't know yet. Wow. They don't know. Yet. Listen, last night people know because you know you said it on the stream. I was supposed to go to this fright night. I went with a bunch of my friends. Then Co Tuck was gonna be there, and then Jay Flair said I'm gonna be there, and then at the last minute both canceled on. And at that point of the night, wasn't looking good for the Bravos. Guess what happened, though? Mm. What happened? Jay Flair ended up coming. Wow. 
Late night Braves magic. Jay Flair shows up. The universe is kind of back in order. We're hanging out, and then boom, we get the eighth inning with Ozzy and Austin Young Thick, and then boom, Rosario. Braves got the magic right now. They she ex- got it. She excited for the Braves? His friend Freed? Mm, not really. <laughs> not really. He's excited for Max. But he's he's one of those guys that doesn't want to watch the playoffs. He's he's sick to his stomach that they're not in it. He's the ultimate competitor. So, yes, he's happy for Max. But I was like, hey, we're going to go to a game. He's like, I can't go. He's like, I can't watch right now. Eh, I get it. He's so big too. Whenever I hang out with him, I'm so mad at him that he's so big, tall, and handsome. Big Damn bones. It. Big boned. Um, let's burn it so we can talk about it. Mm. There's a lot of fun aspects mm. of this game. And the first burn by Jake brought to you by Dugout Mugs. Oh, yes. Dugout Mugs. Wow, over Trevor Plouffe's face right now. Brutal. Um, that's kind of our money maker. Dugout mugs. If you don't know, now you know. Dugout mugs has been with us through all the live streams. They've been with us early, talking baseball. Hell, talking Yanks. Dugout mugs. You've seen it. They are baseball bats that have been hollowed out that you drink out of to become dugout mugs. They're awesome. The engraving on them is badass. And if you go to dugoutmugs.com/talking. You can get a free knob shot. T. Plouffe's got his right there. Minnesota Twins. Uh, the knob shots, they're awesome. I mean, they're, if you've got your, wherever you watch the game, if you've got your bar, if you're a baseball person, they're an absolute flex. Um, they've sent us some. Ooh. They've they've been awesome decor. Uh, and we've been drinking out of them. That's Ooh. what you want to do when you're watching a game. Four hours. You're going to have to drink something. You know what else you can do with them? What's that? Make out with them. You can make out wow. with your dugout mug. Um, I ain't tried yeah. that yet. Dugoutmugs.com slash talk and get your free knob shot, shot glass. They also got the metal ones. We haven't referenced those in a minute. Those are pretty badass. They know what they're doing. They're good at what they do. Thank you, Dugout Mugs. Go check them out. Jake, are these made in China? Um, I don't think so. I can look it up. No, they are not. They're not. I think they're American. You guys know China's on my list of countries I don't like. Oh, back at it. We're back <laughs> early. Early <laughs> for that talk. <laughs> made in the U.S., baby. Thank Let's you, BBD. <laughs> Drake, any market set burn? Holy get ca- The Dodgers down a game to the Braves. Hope Maxwell would bring his silver hammer as Scherzer would try to nail down a win. And the Braves wanted to put on a science class as they'd show off their net electric charge. Ion Anderson would try to defend Westeros for the Bravos. Top one MVP most ball in his player. Corey Seager, last year's MVP of the World Series with the two-run ding-dong. It's stay 2 nothing into the fourth. Let's get dressed up and grab your pearls. Jocktoberfest continues, yeah. Two-run bob by young Jock Boing. Into the seventh, Chris Taylor, gang, two-run double. Good fortitude to make the score four to two. In the eighth, Urias, here comes the bad man, Steady Eddie Rosario. He gets a hit. Braves crazy train continues with Ozzy Albies with the RBI single. Four to three, make it fours. I like that peach down in Georgia. Young Thick, Austin Riley, mm-hmm, that dress. Bottom nine, call Ted Nugent, because we got some cat scratch fever. Eddie Rosario and his eyebrows under Seeger's glove. Ion to Chavez, to Minter, to Webb, to Matzik, to Jackson, to Martin, to Smith. Braves win 5-4 final and go up 2-0 in the series. You're electric. Got dizzy. You're electric. Got dizzy. Fought through the end. <laughs> Proud of you. Need more water. Me and V-Hudge. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Cali water. Add. <laughs> James, uh, what you got, man? I I mean, 
one, Bill Plasky just I just saw a tweet from him last night that has me laughing. Um what happened? It's, it's, it just came on my radar, so this is an aside, but Moylan responded to him. Uh pretty funny. After the five game madness against the Giants, this NLCS game won in sterile shopping mall Atlanta Stadium. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Feels like a Saturday night in May. Most excitement is discussion of post game trip to Waffle House. It's like the saltiest tweet. Like he's saying that he's saying that Atlanta was just a bad time to watch a game. Yeah. Just wow. saying the most exciting thing was the discussion about the Waffle House trip. It's Why like, do I know Bill Plaschke? Is he an LA Times guy? Yeah, you know him around from, the um, horn. Around the horn. You'd you'd know him instantly if you saw his face. Okay. Um Man, I don't know. It's just such a salty tweet. It's hilarious. It's getting don't talk. Don't talk about Braves Nation like that. Is that what it's called, Braves Nation? Sure. Yeah, I made that up. If it is, if it isn't, it is I now. Don't think so. Um, oh, maybe not. I'm, I'm, I'm. The Braves are awesome. I and I, obviously. I want to rip on the Dodgers, but I don't want Braves fans coming at me saying like, don't just, you know, act like the Dodgers are blowing it because the Braves are winning and they're putting together good at bats and they're like late and close and that's, they're just clutch and they're awesome. And I like Snit's moves with uh, his pen. But what the hell are the Dodgers doing? Why is Urias pitching in the eighth inning? And then Scherzer just says my arm felt dead. We couldn't, I don't know. Like, and then, and then, then having, um, Sousa in, in right, um, letting, letting, uh, Eddie tag up from first. I think that was Pollock threw that one in. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of little details here. And then, you know, Seeger off his glove to end the game. Like, the sloppy managing or, situational or like you know i would shock that susan and and all these people they're like getting into every game Dodgers have a lot of good players that we always rave about and they're letting other stuff get in the way it's weird i don't know what they're doing this game was weird it's a lot of that you know we we praise teams when they go unconventional with their bullpens in, in the postseason. We actually enjoy it. We love that, you know, Urias can come in high leverage anytime and then also start, but it's it, eventually it can bite you. And it has bit the Dodgers a little bit here. Uh, you are getting a bunch of different players in the game when you're, when you're moving pitchers around this much. And then we saw last night with, with all Scherz piece, uh, people were pissed when, Roberts took him out and they were saying, oh, like, how, how could you not trust him here? But then after the game, he's like, dude, my arm was dead. He went to Roberts and said, I got two hitters. And if I, if I'm not there, you got to, you got to pull me. Like he, he's fatigued because they've been pitching in unconventional ways. Whereas Snitker has kept his bullpen kind of like, you know, they know when they're going to pitch, they know their kind of role. And I think that helps guys recover mentally. It helps you. Uh, and and when it works, that unconventional approach is awesome. But then you know we saw with Scherzer with Urias last night. Sometimes when it backfires, it just it, it doesn't look right. And you're gonna pay you're gonna pay for it in the upcoming in the upcoming games. Like how how is Urias now gonna uh, respond? He's supposed to start game four. You'll never have, have a lot. Never have that move make sense to me. I mean, Trinan threw nine pitches. They have the lead. Trinan goes one more inning. You still have Brewstar and Kenley, who obviously were available to you, and you have the lead. Like, why? Why is Urias coming in? It makes you have your guys to close out the game. Yeah, he he said some he said some reasons after the game, but I I think at the root of it is they maybe trust Urias in those situations more than anybody else. Like, I think that's the root of it. And people are saying analytics, analytics. I don't know if that was necessarily like an analytical move. I think it's just that Urias has kind of been their guy and he put him in a high leverage spot, didn't work out. But I agree with you. I mean, you look at what Trinan's done, like I mean, he's freaking filthy. And I know he he got touched up and walked off in game one. But like I said, uh, after that game, it wasn't like hard hits. He gets through nine pitches. He's ready. I don't know, man. Yeah. A lot of second guessing, but I don't mind Urias having the ball 
in a high leverage spot. The the Dodgers clearly believe in this, which we'll we'll see. And hey, Urias was the the hero last playoff series, and if he came in, Dave Roberts gave Urias a two run lead going into the eighth inning. Like last year, that was the formula for a win. Um, so hey, he he was hunting the win, and he kind of gets got. So we'll we'll see what that means going forward. But Jimmy, you said this on the live stream. A, the Dodgers having to come to Atlanta, West Coast to East Coast, after playing the five gamer against San Fran, you know they they had a they had a back end bullpen day game one, so they didn't seem completely dialed and had their best punch for that. Now we see Scherzer; he goes four point one seventy nine pitches. I mean, one of the bigger Warrior starting pitchers that's still in baseball. He had to close out the San Francisco game. Like, we're seeing a ripple effect of that series. If if the Dodgers had won that series in four, Mad Max probably just would have, what, started game one and maybe not have had a tired arm. So we're seeing, we're seeing the ripple effect of the Braves. They took care of their business. They won in four. The Dodgers went up against the Big Bad Wolf in San Francisco, man. It's kind of like right now if you're a Dodgers fan, it's got to feel like, uh, you know, a cliffhanger type movie where they knock the other person off the cliff, but then on the way down, they like stab them with the knife in their Achilles heel or something like that. Badass movie. Badass film. We should do Jesus. it. Jesus. Yeah. Cliffhanger. You know, cliffhanger. That's this the is name. a, gosh dang, I just lost it. Where, What'd you just lose? It. All right. This is getting, I don't want to like give this too much. But I did read it, and I thought it was interesting. Tom House. You guys know who Tom House is? House. Love his first album. Didn't like the second. He's he's like an old pitch. He's a former pitcher who's like the mechanics guru. He's been around forever, throwing guru. I think even Tom Brady worked with them at some point. Like he's very a active guy. on Twitter and comments on my blitzball pitches a good amount. Okay, I don't. I, I I've had good experiences with him. Whatever he put out last night. Talking about Scherzer because Scherzer said I have he had dead arm. He says recovery is at a premium in the playoffs. You need every hour of sleep and recovery possible. Celebrations are fun, but alcohol pushes back recovery mm. by hours. As a pitcher, I wouldn't partake. Recover faster, pitch better, win, party later. I'm aware this is an old man take. Wow. So like this is this is what's gonna happen. So this this is the, the double edged sword here. Everybody loves party Scherzer. Everybody loves, you know, f- screw tomorrow, get drunk tonight, we'll figure it out later. Like, I think that was a quote he said, not a quote, but something right around there. And then you come out and have dead arm and you have Tom House saying you're not recovering correctly. I don't know, man. And that was interesting to me to think about. Max Scherzer. Dodgers have had a party and then flying cross country and having to do all this. And then you tell, you know, you had to come out with dead arm. I know it has something to do with the fact that you came in, in the ninth inning, but interesting he's getting Whoa. facebook red cup treatment in 2008 what's that mean jim facebook red cup treatment back when facebook was like the facebook we grew up with they told you like oh any pictures of you holding a red cup on your facebook that's going to be held against you and so now max scherzer 36 year old max scherzer is getting that Oh, up higher, 37. 37. And one. Um, get out of here, Tom Mouse. No, Tom Mouse is awesome. You don't like awesome. him? He also, he, he also tweeted, players will use the best tech in the world to analyze their game, then not sleep enough, eat right, or drink enough water. Like, new tech doesn't fix bad process, which, I mean, he's not against the tech. He's, and he said it's an old man take. It's true. But, uh, it's just he, interesting to see what comes out. You know what I mean? He likes our blitzball videos, and he's my new pitching coach. So, Well, that's kind of why I'm also against him. It seems like he picked a side. <laughs> uh, I, I think he commented on one once. It's tough. Uh, before we kind of get to the Braves side of thing a little more, can I tell you guys about uh, Charity Buzz? Oh, oh sure. dude. He said you're the blitzball gratter also. What? <laughs> <laughs> has he has he watched the actual? <laughs> has he seen Bruce Star Gratterall pitch? You put, yeah, you put a miles per hour limit, so you're not. Well, not that not hasn't yet. been enforced yet, so you're kind of giving stuff away, Trev. And speaking of giving stuff away, cards.charitybuzz.com. 
Trev, you're a card guy. You are kind of the card guy here. Um, what if I told you you could you could get a Topps 1952 Mickey Mantle rookie card, PSA grade of eight? Is that something I could interest you in? Yeah, I would like that. And over at Charity Buzz, the premier online marketplace uh, for causes, hosting a philanthropic. Oh my God, what a great word, Trev! You, you we just said we wanted to get into philanthropy. I think it's philanthropic, but nobody's whatever. sure. Yeah, no. no, I said I know a <laughs> Phil. Rapist. I know a philanthropic. A uh, nice guy. Okay. Um, he helps with my uh, my Bitcoin <laughs> investing. <laughs> um. Trev, the funds raised by the benefit are going to at-risk youths uh, through the Inspiring Children Foundation auction. It'll be live until Thursday, October 28th. If you're a card collector who also wants your money to go to a good cause, it's the best of both worlds. Uh, you'll find Aaron Judge and Shohei Otani rookie cards there. Whoops. Uh, visit cards.charitybuzz.com, and you can follow at Charity Buzz on all the major, major social platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Charity Buzz, go check them out if you're in the cards game, or if you're not. If you like cards or good causes or Trevor Plouffe, you'll go there. Now it all makes sense. I was getting some strange tweets to me about charity and buzz going on, and now I get it. Something happened, and here we are. Oh, yeah, we told people to tweet at you yesterday. Or okay. The other day. <laughs> I was like, what is happening? I forgot, I for- <laughs> forgot what we told them to say. I think uh, I think Jake told everyone to tweet at you and say they love your charity work. Yeah, yeah, they did. They said that you're welcome. Oops, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Let's talk about this game. Let's talk about. I don't know if I can. What's going on with your right, Braves, Trev? Eddie Rosario, your guy. That's our guy. It's it's just kind of happening for them. You know, it's not a one person thing. Like we have multiple people carrying this team right now. And I was talking to C Rose about it. Look, over 162, Dodgers are the better team. There's just no doubt about it. Like it showed up in the regular season. They won 106 games, but this ain't 162. Mm. You know, seven game series, anything can happen. Bats can go cold, bats can get hot, and that's going to be the difference. The Dodgers can't hit with runners in scoring position. The Braves, are barely getting runners into scoring position, but when they do, they're getting them in. Like it's it's the timely hitting, the the you know the the ball bouncing your way when and not the other team's way. And these series, that's all it takes, man. We're up two nothing now, and it was a few different things. I mean, it's, it's Rosario tagging up on a fly ball to left field, just sneaking in. You know, Ozzy getting jammed through the shift, scoring that. Um, I mean, the, the, the send by Ron Washington with Rosario where he was like this safe, like all these things can just go the other way, but they didn't, they're going the Braves way right now. Not to mention Jock and Austin Riley stepping up. I mean, they have the momentum, the magic, everything working for them right now. Two victories away from the world series. Yep. Just. They were up three one last year. The Dodgers yeah. are still good. Like I, it, I'll say this: I think the Braves, if they if they are to win, they they needed to take the two at home. Like Jake had a realization yesterday, and he was just like, "It's coming back to Atlanta. Like this series will finish in Atlanta, no yeah. matter what." That's huge. So, you know, I I think we all thought the Dodgers were going to win this easily. I, I still think, obviously, the Dodgers can pull off two wins at home, and and then it comes back. But, and this is dumb. The Braves are in the best spot. If the Braves had didn't win both these games, I I think that they don't come. They might not come back to Atlanta. I could see that. And team teams that go up two two zero win eighty four percent of the series. Now, obviously, the most recent case of teams not winning the series after going up two zero is last year between these same two teams. So. You know, the Dodgers understand the position they're in. Uh, but the way like that everyone's kind of clicking right now, uh, Jock has just got something going on, dude. You know, Young Thick seems locked in. I watched some video of him talking about his mechanics. And like, you know, he made like a conscious effort to, you know, stay back on the ball more, like kind of be more balanced. And you can just tell, man, he's like on everything. 
And uh, I don't know who was after after the game was talking about how, and you always hear winning teams say this. Um, I think it was either Jock or Austin Riley. They were saying, no, we don't feel any pressure because if I don't get the job done, somebody else is going to get the job done. It's like, you know, different people stepping up every night. So that's a good feeling to have as a team when you don't have to shoulder the load. They're playing with house money a little bit. I mean, their their best player hasn't been there for half the season. Acuna played 82 games this year. Um, man, I mean, Rosario signed the one-year deal, got traded over there. He, he's balling out four-hit game from the leadoff spot, gets put up there and balls out. Jock with another homer. He signed the one-year contract with the Cubs, gets traded over there. He's balling out. He's wearing pearls, man, like I – I I had a a pretty good it just got posted awaken Jay clip but I was like dude if that happened in Ted Lasso like a player started wearing pearls and then the whole stadium started wearing pearls you'd be like all right Ted Lasso riders like you push the envelope a little far this is real life there's <laughs> look at you <laughs> there's 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 adults there's kids there's boys there's girls everyone's wearing pearls in the stadium and Jock also. After that, has a blonde mohawk. He's balling out. He's playing so aggressive. It's so fun. Um, the other thing that is kind of wild if you're a Braves fan, Freddie has been deemed useless so far. He's 0 for 8 with 7 Ks, 7 straight. He finally gets a fly out, um, which, boy, did he, like, need that. And I don't know. Uh, Jim, absolutely what you're saying, like, I don't think anyone thinks this series is over over. The Braves, they are the Vegas favorites now. I mean, like Trev said, teams with a 2-0 lead. Um, If they can bring it seven games, four of the Braves' starting pitchers are going to be Bueller for two of those games. He'd be three and seven. Um, Urias, and you'd get another Scherzer start. So, like, obviously you can't rule the Dodgers out. Unless they just bring Urias out of the pen again. And they might do that. Who knows? Um, The Dodgers are star-studded. It's going back to L.A. They're going to talk themselves into this. Here's what I'll say, and not to give too much of the preview for tomorrow's talk in baseball. They're playing at a weird time tomorrow, 2 o'clock in L.A., and it's Bueller versus Morton. So, like, if you're the Dodgers, you got to be – obviously, you're down 2-0. But is there going to be a point where it's the fifth inning and the Braves are up 1-0 and Charlie Morton looks gross and you got shadows creeping in? Like, the Dodgers have put themselves in a super dangerous spot. I mean, obviously, they're down 2-0, Jake. But um, I don't know. This is fun, man. This is a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. You know what? You want to know why? Because if this was the other way around and the Dodgers were up 2-0, we'd be like, this series is over. Done. Done. But... Braves. Braves country, by the way. It's not Braves nation. Braves country. My mistake. Got to be feeling good about the situation they're in. Like you said, Freddie hasn't given them anything. Charlie Morton hasn't thrown a pitch yet this series. They're doing it. It's awesome, man. And their and their bullpen has been there for them. Dude, what's the news on Solaire? One. Two. It's being highlighted again. And after last night's game being brought to everyone's attention. The Indians traded Eddie Rosario to the Braves for nothing. Wasn't Pablo Sandoval? <laughs> Who is nothing, Trev. Yeah. Immediately released. Immediately released. Like, inside trading, like if this was in the financial world, you'd point it and you'd say, you sus- <laughs> you're suspect. You guys made a deal somewhere. Like, this doesn't add up. Indians fans... I'd be like, what? Yeah. We didn't get anything for him. Not even two 17 year olds with, with like, you know, 10% of promise. Ridiculous trade. It, it's funny because they you said, know, you're hearing people, do you want Eddie Rosario for free? Yeah. And they, and there then the Braves said, yes, absolutely. And they said, well, okay, the league isn't going to approve of that for free, but can you just send us <laughs> something? Like, All right. You're on Pablo. There must have been some money offset. There's got to be something. We got to look into that a little more. Dude, I think it, we're we're talking about baseball and where it's going, especially if this Braves crazy train continues a little bit. I mean, Freed, Morton, and Ion. Uh, by the way, Soroka out for the year. Um, you know, they've got bullpen guys that have been through it a few times now. And like Jimmy just referenced, they traded for Soler, who was a batting leadoff for them and was going nuts for them. They traded for Jock, 
who's been going nut job for them and has started basically a craze. Adam Duvall was near the league leader in RBIs. Uh, did I say Rosario? Is he the one I missed so far who had four hits from the leadoff spot last night? They traded for four MLB outfielders. What did they give up? So uh, they Jim- bought everyone at their lowest, and I, and and I was pro- I was saying like why at the time, so I'm wrong there. But I also am still mad at the Indians Guardians. But if you want to add that to your equation, Jim, if you have if you have enough starting pitching, and a trade deadline rolls up, and you can get an Eddie Rosario for nothing, starting there's a pitch is important. Me there's a GM agree. game plan. You know. Eddie, and this is what's great about playoff baseball, and like it just shows you if you're hot, that's what matters. The guy's hitting leadoff. He's got a career like what 300 on base percentage. Like he is not a leadoff hitter. That's been his knock on his game this entire time he's been in the big leagues. Is he just doesn't get on base. He swings too much. Now everyone's praising. He loves to go after the first pitch. Put him fucking leadoff. He's gonna go four for five. I love it, man. Like you just every postseason a team gets collectively gets hot and they're the one that does it if they if the Braves can stay hot man Eddie Rosario hitting leadoff for you that's unfreaking heard of hot. So he's getting hey, the job done hey Trev I have a question for you I don't know if there's any more in this game but uh that video of Joe Kelly um doing gamesmanship and and do fake shaking have you seen that for yeah, Sauce Riley really? mm-hmm. as a batter um, do you think, is that something that you paid attention to? I, I mean, clearly pitchers do it for a reason. I, I think it worked in that situation. He took a curveball right down the middle. Yeah. I think there are times where you can get in sync with a pitcher and you can tell a difference between a real shake and then a plan shake. And if you can do that, you might be able to guess along with them. But what it does to you as a hitter is now when he does it that much, it now makes you think about all of his pitches. Like, oh, he shook there. I mean, how many shakes does he have? What pitches does he have? So now in your head, you're thinking about two or three different pitches instead of being like locked in on one or on a specific zone. So it does get you thinking a little bit. And even that is enough to, you know, get your timing off or your balance off or something like that. So yeah, it definitely worked for him. When Riley goes back to the dugout or whatever, or clubhouse in the middle of the game or after the game and he watches that and sees like what the hell were those shakes and then sees that he they would they were all fake is he just like that fucker <laughs> like you got yeah, it's, like, it, it's games for sure oh it's awesome i mean a, a yeah. really good job by was it fox last night really good job by fox going to the split screen at that they caught something great by going to the split screen i'd go to split screen with a catcher and pitcher no one on no one on base i'd show the catcher's fingers every time I think so too. You're right about that. Maybe they'll they'll take you up on that. They all, they steal all your other stuff. So mm. that's the coolest part. But like, and and a lot of people responded that um, Will Smith like kind of had to know that he just does fake shakes because any other catcher is going to be like call time and go do a mound visit. And be like, what the fuck do you want, man? I I put down every pitch twice, but he just yeah. kept rolling with it. So he Joe Kelly must say like, hey, we're gonna do a lot of fake shakes here, which is they know planned game they know it's awesome yeah they know there'll be times where like you can see it like when i used to play shortstop or even when i used to pitch it's there are times where you'll shake and they'll just throw the exact same sign back down to you and then okay here we go tbs it's just just a rapport that you develop over time tibis hey will smith first will smith Mm. got it will smith won yeah yeah one for, hey, one for five, I think four four Ks and one home run. I think one both, big homer. Both Will Smiths would half trade on that. I know the pitcher probably wouldn't admit it, but what uh, Ashton always says, I wish we had the good Will Smith. <laughs> Tough. Did uh did the did it remain true that Trey Turner's fly out was a homer in every other stadium? I haven't seen the The one Rosario man. caught? Yeah, because I'm still calling bull spit on that. That doesn't make any sense. All right, you're with us. Yeah, I don't believe all that stuff. Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. You boys want to talk some Red Sox Houston tonight? Mm. Yeah. Is anyone 
uh, going to administer this conversation? No, no, but I will say this. I mean, this is just off the top of my head. Uh, the only thing spookier than seeing a black cat on Halloween, shaving your balls with anything other than Manscaped. Um, just something I want to get off my chest. Uh, when it become when it comes to below Lock the waist your grooming, your balls. Ooh, there's no need to carve your pumpkins this Halloween because Manscaped is here to upgrade your grooming experience. Go from a bite-sized candy bar to a king-sized candy bar. That's when you shave your pubes and your dick looks bigger. Uh, and with promo code Talkin, T A L K I N, you get twenty percent off plus free shipping. I mean, how nice is that? And not only do you get the the perfor- the lawnmower 4.0, it comes with the f- the performance package 4.0. There's a weed whacker for nose hair and ear trimmer stuff, the crop preserver, the ball deodorant and the crop reviver. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Um and there's some gifts in there. They give the boxers in the travel bag. I use the travel bag. Trev and I use the boxers. Am I wearing them now? Mm. No. I'm not, but I, mm-hmm. they're in the mix. They're in the mix. We love Manscaped. BBD, what are you thinking over there? I love the boxers. Whoa! Oh, had, a big, had a big walking around the city day last week. Pop those bad boys on. I'm prone to chafing. Can't be a wow. shocker. Yeah. And they work. You gotta get the you gotta get the the, the body glide, BBD. If you don't have it. If oh, oh I use just. I use everything, but those boxers really do help. Just get these Manscaped boxers uh, that come with the whole kit. Go to manscaped.com. Use promo code TALKIN, 20% off, free shipping. Um, And if you order it and you send a screenshot to BBD, he'll send you a picture of his chafing. Um, Oh, yeah. So thank you, Manscaped. Appreciate you. Okay. What a read right there. Thank you. Oh, big news, Jake. Check this out. Big news. Jimmy's standing. He's, He's wearing sh- jeans? Yeah, it's first time uh, wearing jeans all year. You 55 went degrees. jeans today. Wow. 55. And blue so I'm jeans, in. too. Yeah, I just have like two pairs of the same jeans that get rotated. That doesn't surprise me at all. I think maybe I have three. Ooh. But yeah, I'm okay. pretty excited. I was pretty excited to wake up and be like, "It's actually fall. I'm gonna wear pants." Legitimately, yeah, what kind of jeans or what kind morning? of cut? What kind of cut? Yeah, like is it slim? Is it baggy? Is it slim? I have to wear slim because my I'm so fat in the waist <laughs> that if I do like straight, then they're just like incredibly baggy mm. knee below, and they look like I'm wearing floods. So I got to go slim fit jeans. Mm. Okay. God, I can- I could hear you say wearing floods all day. That was a cool sentence. Thank you. No Thank problem, you. man. What uh are you guys excited for Urkiti versus Erod tonight? We'll be live streaming with Kelsey mm. Wingnut. Yes, Kel's coming in. Oh. Be fun. Yeah. You're not excited for yeah. You guys are in a tough spot. Erod's really so boring. Like Erod's best game isn't getting any on any highlight reels. And, you know, his duds are like not even that bad of duds. So um, he's he's probably he's probably one of the more steady, reliable pitchers that's been on the Red Sox for the last five years. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know if he's like a pitching ninja guy; he doesn't excite anything. But hopefully, it's a good game. He's one of those guys where you think you're gonna rake him every time you go up there, and you don't. It's just how it is. He's one of those guys. He 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 serves pitches to you in a zone that you think you can have success in, and then you can't. And I'm actually excited to see some of that. Uh, with a guy like Bregman, who I think can get to the zone that he throws in. You know, sometimes he'll go in a little bit up with that cutter. Bregman can pull the hands, and he d- he does the choke-up thing. I'm I'm banking on Breggy having at least a ball off of the monster tonight. Okay. Mm. Mm. But th- th- this is the story of the game, is the starting pitching and how they're going to use the pitchers um travel days so everybody's rested we know the astros are thin on starter so urquidy uh has to you know pick up some slack there he's got he can't we can't have like a two inning thing out of this guy or else it's gonna be really bad for the astros um it's yeah did i say he hasn't pitched since the end of the regular season did you guys know that yeah jesus that's he hasn't pitched in 15 days 
October 3rd, yeah. He yeah, was stretched and, out then. I'm sure he did bullpens and stuff. But uh, it's going to be an offensive game. I mean, it's Fenway, and it's these two pitchers. So I just hope then, that it's exciting in the end. It, it will be. I mean, we have to see it, how Cora is going to manage the pen. Is he going to like, is Pavetta going to be in there? Are we going to say Pavetta for game four? Like, these are all the decisions that I think are going to be where the game is won or lost is how they're managing this bullpen. You know, the starters are going to start and we'll see how they go. But then what's the move afterwards? They did say that, I believe he did say that Pavetta is the plan for game four unless they need him tonight. So Pavetta, yeah. so if the, if the Red Sox, you know, and they're going to need him then. Yeah. I don't, unless we think they're going to, the Red Sox are going to feel so comfortable up six, nothing or something like that. So the, that that's where the fun does start today. You're right. Erod versus Urquidy. That doesn't get anyone really standing on the edge of your seat. I mean, best, best case for both of those guys is like there's, five there's, innings, two earned. And that's there's like, no, their best there's case. no hype tweets about it. No, no. Urquidy or or versus Erod. Let's fucking do it. But the, the three day chess mass match starts today. And again, like four innings from either of those guys in this series and how baseball's played today is big. So who can get there? Who can't? And then like you said, Cora's brilliant chess match starts today. Does he pull the Pavetta button? Does he pull the Hauk button? Hauk threw 18 pitches on Friday. Um, so that's the thing. I, I think both teams, if they get four two times through the lineup, they have a formula. The Red Sox can either go to Pavetta or Hauk and in theory, that brings them to their higher leverage guys, Brazier, Whitlock, Robles, or on the other side of the ball, uh, for Houston, their best weapon so far has been Javier. So if you can get uh, like four out of Urquidy, you get two out of Javier, then you're to your higher leverage guys, uh, Presley, Graveman, maybe some Stanek, Rayleigh, lefty-righty stuff. But it's if those starting pitchers can get to four, and I don't know if you can, man. These lineups are gross right now. We're in Fenway. Very excited to see the 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 game path of this game. You know, you open up Grand Slam, Grand Slam. Last game was over quick. Where's mm-hmm. the blood in the water? How ugly does it get early? Because that's that's all it is. We know Cora is going to do everything he can win to every game in the playoffs. It's nuts that you have to say that. Um, he's going to go out and try to get this. So yeah, I mean, full pension, Piv. I wonder what uh. I wonder if we could talk to DraftKings and get a line on full pension Piv getting in this mm. game. That'd be a that'd be mm. a good line. I'm at the DraftKings app right now, searching for some bets because I'm going to leave New Jersey soon. Do you guys want to help me? Need it? So, yeah, let us know what you got. I'll, I'll help you out, man. Uh, the you the line is minus one twenty for runs in the first inning. So they so they're just telling you they think someone's going to score. Uh, it's usually I just so. it's usually just one hundred both ways. Um, so I'm not placing that bet. Peter Moreland failed me yesterday. Mm. <laughs> well, yeah, we were talking about that. You, Ion Anderson's first inning struggles. I was listening. I can reverse a bet. DraftKings allows you to just say like, Hey, st- st- psych. I don't want to do that anymore until first pitch. So, you know, okay. Just lost half my moat. Is there, give me a Bregman prop. If you can find any Bregman props. tonight. I think tonight's going to be a game for him, especially early against, Erod. I wonder if he has. I need to go look at his numbers right now. Hold on. All the alternative player props. Alex Bregman total hits over two and a half or under. Jesus, two and a half. That's high. That's a lot. Two dude. and a half get... hits. What's the line under? Uh, negative uh, fourteen hundred. I bet five dollars oh. to win. I bet five dollars to win thirty five cents. <laughs> What is that's a, the worst line I've ever <laughs> what the fuck? It's a that's a big that's a big line. Well, hit the over because this hit the over and just sprinkle a little bit. What's the over? It's gonna be plus a lot, right? That's how they get you, Trev. That's how you don't win 35 sprinkle cents. Sprinkle Jake, sprinkle seven, Jake. 700. Jim's, put- Jim's gonna take his 35 cents, pay me half of it to maintain the moat, and you're gonna be sitting there losing money. Let's put a the dollar. Pro- I'll put a the dollar. Problem is we're gonna get three. Hits. Let's go. The problem is walks. Okay, here, you want to know his, his uh, line off of Erod? Tear it. Five for 12, two homers, a double, 417, 462, one dot for a 1.462. Mm. The guy is. I didn't even right, know right. that. I knew he okay. was going to rake. All right. Carlos Correa over uh, total hits 
one and a half. You think Correa's going to get two? Or Verdugo is also one and a half. Dude, just do all of them, and like two out of five will hit. Just do all of them as one dollar, and eventually, net, like, net. you, you got to make money. Oh somehow. my god, stop! Um, I'm, gonna, I'm doing that. I'm putting a dollar on every individual over. What's the most I lose? Five bucks. What's yeah. if one of them hits? I've won five bucks. Yes, we've got a gambler. Verdugo um, over two and a half hits. One buck. Carlos um, Correa, six for 10 with a double. 600, 733, 700 slugging for a 1.4. Both these guys have 1.4s against Erod. Look out, dude. Yeah, this is a. Uh... Enrique over one and a half hits. Yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely. already done. I put, I put 100 on that one. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be an interesting game. I really, when McCullers went out, it really put a damper on my Astros feeling, you know, my, mm -hmm. my, you know, trust level with them, but they can slug with anybody. Even when they were down nine runs, they put a scare into the Red Sox. They're going to have to continue to do it. I think th what's the over under on this game. Got to be eight and a half again, nine. maybe nine, nine. The, the bats are coming to play in this series. There's just no way around it. It's, it's who can – this is what the game is going to come down to. Mm. Who gets the outs with runners in scoring position? Who gets the big strikeout? Like that. That's what this game is going to come down to. There's going to be hits with runners in scoring position. There's going to be runs, but there's going to be a time where somebody steps up, gets the big strikeout, and that's going to be the – that's going to be the game. Mm. You can – should I bet on someone to go hitless? <laughs> what do we got? Dude, take uh, the over on Guriel hits. He's hitting. I just did. I skipped nice. a lot of people, and then I took uh, Yuli. Um, uh, I skipped Jordan, Xander, but Devers, I can. Oh, hold on. Where is it? Brantley, on, uh, plus 200 that he won't get a hit. But that's not that fun. He already, Michael Brantley already has a hit walking into this game. That's true. Um, a little, uh, not to say actual analysis. You guys know me. Um both these pitchers, Urquidy's 50% heaters. Um, Erod is like, if you if you factor in his cutter, which he kind of shouldn't, it's kind of his off-speed pitch, but he's 50% fastball, 17% cutter. So, And it seems like all of these guys hit fastball. So I don't know. Are Do those guys stick with it? Are they bailing from their normal plan to go more off-speed? Uh, Arkady normally doesn't walk people. Is he attacking these Red Sox hitters? You kind of have to be a complete sicko to do that at this point. Um, you got to pitch around Kike. Can we do that tonight, no, Astros? He's he's already <laughs> hit it off the monster, and Fenway's going nuts. James, give me a line on Bregman to Homer tonight, and then take that line. Mm. So they don't like they don't have it as one. I'd have to have him homering twice because they have it as one and a half homers. Jesus Christ. Dude. Yeah. What's wrong? Uh, uh, right now I'm looking at <laughs> outs recorded uh, for Erod. And what's 12 and a half? Three, four innings, over. four innings, four, 4.1, 4.05. So if I think he's he might make get... it, he's going to give us the runs, but they might make sure he goes that long. That, that's kind of what happened. That's that's what happened in the last series. Cora's a sicko, dude. Cora said before his last start against the Rays, like he is not an opener. He's not going three. He's a starting pitcher. We're going to get as many out of him as possible, and he rewarded them. He went five. He went. I think he went five that game. I I have the Bregman to Homer line. Bregman to Homer uh, plus five hundred. Over oh, take game. it, James. Where where are Let's you finding go. that? Uh, in the game, player props, the tab that's just home runs. You can go home run and team to win if you believe in the Astros to win tonight, but it's not that much more of an odds boost. I'd probably just stick with the homer. All right. How about this one? We each, the four of us, we each get one player who has their home run taken away by the monster tonight. Who do you got? JD. Okay, that's mm. a good pick. Thanks. It's a home run taken away. Taken away by the monster. I'll I think Kyle Tucker might. I think Kyle Tucker might like pop one up and 
it goes off the monster. Lefties love to mash that monster. Okay. I have nine bets placed right now. I need a tenth. Obviously, I'm not going to leave it at nine. I'll go Yuli. I'll go Yuli. That's a good one. Like a low just, fucking yeah, minor. Just a fucking seed right into the monster. Stop cussing. Sorry. <laughs> BBD? And I'll take Bregman. We have him in Bregman. the Homer draft okay. tonight. And so we'll just that's what happens. have our soul. Curse. Oh, you guys have him? Am I part? I don't know what team I'm on in the Homer draft. Good. Jose Altuve to steal a base is plus 800. Done. Taking it. Dollar. That's my bet. Dollar. I have 10 $1 bets on the board. We'll track them on tonight's So the most stream. I can the most I can lose is $10. The most I can win is 8 <laughs> Plus five is 13. <laughs> plus seven is 20. Plus two, 22. Plus two, 24, 23. And uh, like 35 bucks. So, you know, that's gambling. What else we got, man? Better put that more it? money on there. I think that's it. We're streaming yeah, tonight with Kelsey Winger. Let's go. Trevor Who's Bluth, winning tonight? Go Hots. quick. Who's winning tonight? Go quick. Who? Go. Strohs. 10-9. Jake sucks. Strohs early lead. Red Sox make it close at the end. Wow. Seven, six, Astros. Wow. Plumes of smoke.